Welcome and thank you for joining us in our weekly devotions in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Health. Redemptorists, their friends and all of the devotees of Our Lady, how happy you can join us every week in prayer, song and reflection for this half hour. As we perhaps alone in our homes, apartments, hospitals and nursing homes, Look upon this most familiar picture of our mother of perpetual help today. Let us bring our lives to her, remembering that we are not really alone. Joining us are millions of people who, like ourselves, are also devotees of our mother of perpetual help from around the world, including the Philippines, India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Japan, and Australia and many countries from the Southern Hemisphere of the Americas, including Mexico, Brazil, Paraguay, and Argentina. In our Mother Church of St. Alphonsus in Rome, where the miraculous icon rests high above the main altar, and in all parts of Eastern and Western Europe, Ukraine and Russia, people are praying the same perpetual help devotions prayers in hundreds of different languages. In North America, people from New York, Boston, St. Louis, Seattle, New Orleans, people pray and sing God's praises through the perpetual novena. Here at home in Canada, more than 100 parishes across the country celebrate the devotions each week. And for more than 100 years, at St. Patrick's Church in downtown Toronto is a national shrine of our Mother of Perpetual Help. There, the novena is celebrated six times every Wednesday bringing together more than a thousand people from nations all around the globe to pray the devotions novena. Together, we join our songs and thoughts in meditation and in prayer, seeking her intercession for our daily needs, spiritual and material, for ourselves and for our loved ones. And we know her son listens to her. From that single soft young mother's voice, in a remote shepherd's town, to now all of our voices from around the whole world, the son who was hers and whom she gave to us listens as lovingly today as he did when laying in a manger. So whenever we look upon this beloved icon, we do so with confidence that we never pray alone. Our joined voices in the millions are one in mind and heart Together, we hold the whole world up to Our Lady, praying for the needs of all God's people. This is our family of prayer, the prayer of the world, making the perpetual novena the ongoing daily prayer of millions each week. Let our voices now become one of these. Sing of Mary.
Mother Mary is my mother because she is Jesus' mother who sacrificed himself for our life and made us free. I have always loved her, but now that I'm older, I feel I know more about her, and thinking about her makes me happy. I pray to her every day, and she makes me feel that everything is good in heaven. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. If I pray to her, I feel she will make me have a great day. Amen. Amen. Mary is important to me because she is the mother of Jesus. Without her, we wouldn't have eternal life in heaven. I pray to her every night. She protects our school and she protects me while I sleep. When I see her picture, I feel happy because I know that she is the mother of Jesus. I think it's really important to help people. I pray for people in need. I also help my parents with chores and I volunteer my time to help others. My parents have influenced me and we try to go to church every Sunday. When I am kind to others, I feel good and that makes me happy. I pray and care for others by praying for them and by helping people. I help my dad cut the grass and other chores because I want to show my love for him. Even if I would rather play on my iPad, I still help him so he knows that I love him. When I'm worried or scared, I think about Mary and I feel that everything will be okay. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, your very name inspires confidence. We come before your holy picture in praise and thanksgiving to God, seeking your intercession with Jesus, your Son, for all the needs of our lives today. We celebrate your holy motherhood as we proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord, Redeemer. You answered when called to be mother of our Lord, Obtain for us the grace to be alive to a baptismal call and especially to embrace the gospel of life and to respect all life on earth. You wondered as your son grew in wisdom, knowledge, and grace. Intercede for us so that we may welcome the word of God in our lives and be bear us the good news to one and all. You delighted as your son healed the sick Intercede for our sick, that they may receive good health, and that in their turn may be healers to others. You enjoyed peace as your son comforted the afflicted. Intercede for all who suffer, so that they may know that we carry their burdens with them, and in this way we keep the law of Christ. You rejoice as your son forgives sins, Obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins and lead us to unbind others and set them free. You suffered at the wounds your son endured for our salvation. Help us to bind up the broken hearted and to give hope to the downtrodden. You exulted in your son's resurrection. Obtain for us the grace to persevere in his way all the days of our lives and be granted a place in heaven. You are the first of all the disciples and saints. We trust in your motherly love and care. Obtain for us all the graces we need to fulfill God's plan each day in our lives. Memorare. Remember, O oh most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to your protection implored your help who sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin, Virgin, our Mother. To you we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the world incarnate, despise not our petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer us. Amen. 
It is one thing to talk about God's mercy. It's another thing to experience it. St. Alphonsus preached the infinite merciful love of our God that was poured out through the sacrament of confession, or as it is called today, reconciliation. But does an encounter with God's mercy make us more merciful? Perhaps we need to see how mercy is a key component of the actions of many of the saints. If you know the story of our founder, St. Alphonsus, you will know that he left behind a vibrant ministry in Naples to look after the poor shepherds and farmers in the hills outside Naples. And he did so because he saw their great need for a living faith in our loving God. Many other examples abound. St. John Bosco saw the orphans and abandoned children on the streets of the cities in Italy. St. Damien gave his life to rebuild the lives of his beloved and abandoned lepers on the island of Molokai in Hawaii. And Mother Teresa saw the dying, the poor, and the abandoned on the streets of Calcutta and brought them the gifts of caring for body and soul. And of course, the Blessed Virgin Mary is called the Mother of Mercy because she knows God's mercy and gathers our prayers before the Father of us all. However, one does not need to be a great saint to learn from God's mercy and be merciful in turn. I look around at faith-filled people, and I see numerous examples of mercy at work. I recall an elderly lady who had taken it upon herself to look after three other more elderly ladies in her neighborhood, and she explained it simply to me. They have no family, they have no one to care for them, but God cares, and I intend to be God's unworthy instrument of this care for them as best I can in their need. Or, I look at a gathering of volunteers who prepare meals for the Out of the Cold program at St. Patrick's Church in Toronto in winter. They don't just throw something together. They prepare meals that they would lovingly serve to their own families at a special celebration. Their attention to these meals is a gift of their culinary skills to those who are often left to eat stale bread or worse. Then, I think of the wonderful religious sisters who for centuries have taken on two major tasks, especially for the poor and abandoned. They brought education and they brought health care to the people who had none. I could also add an entire day's talk about the kindness and mercy that palliative care doctors and nurses and others provide for the dying. But I will move on. All of these examples, those of the saints and those of regular caring people, I am calling acts of mercy. Not because some people take pity upon others. Rather, merciful people see with the eyes of God. They see their brothers and sisters in need and who are suffering and who are marginalized by war or poverty or mental health issues and they look for ways to bring healing and dignity to these people and these situations in which these people find themselves. St. John Paul II called this solidarity, meaning that we are one with those in need, not over and above them and condescending to be kind, no. Caring people know very well that they have already been blessed by God and they are now prepared to share these blessings with those who but for the grace of God could be us. Look around your world and see the mercy that is being lived. Notice the child who befriends another child that others have ostracized. Notice the office worker who sticks up for a co-worker when gossip threatens her reputation. Notice the laborer who helps a neighbor because she is a neighbor in need. Notice the generosity of people who help handicapped children go to a summer camp. When mercy notices the needs of others and responds, then God is at work. It is what Jesus called the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God. God works through human instruments. And when we human instruments have ourselves been touched by God, then we can be, as St. Teresa of Avila said, the arms, the hands, the feet, and the heart of God changing our world through mercy, which is the first great act of love.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you changed water into wine at Cana in Galilee. Hear our prayers and grant our petitions in honor of our mother of perpetual help. Grant wisdom and courage to all our religious and civil leaders, our Holy Father, the Pope, our bishops, and all who lead us, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant peace, unity, and good harvests in all the world, especially in places of conflict, war, famine, and need, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant married couples the grace of the sacrament, wives and husbands a binding love for each other, parents the grace to welcome and cherish their children, single parent families, unity and strength, and peace and blessings on all our homes, we pray. Hear us, Lord, to Mary, our mother. Grant to a single adult's fulfillment in their call, to our young people's success in the endeavors, and courage to witness to their faith, to our elderly vitality, security, and contentment in their days, and to the separated and divorced, the grace of your spirit, we pray. Hear us, Lord, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant workers confidence in their work, dignity in their accomplishments, joy in their contributions, a just and living wage, and to the unemployed, grant gainful work, we pray. Hear Hear us, Lord, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant your church many laborers for the harvest, good priests, deacons, brothers, sisters, and laity who will dedicate their lives to your faithful people, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant eternal life to all the deceased and a place in the communion of the saints where every tear shall be wiped away and where we shall meet you, our God, face to face, we pray. Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Grant each of us the grace to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you each day of our lives. For whatever we do to the least of our brothers and sisters, we do to you, we pray. Hear Hear us, Lord, through Mary, our mother. Let us pray. Mother of perpetual help, we who call on your most powerful name, Thank you for the graces we have received through your intercession and for hearing our prayers today. For God, who is mighty, has done great things through you and God's mercies from age to age on those who fear him. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer and song in our devotions today. Thank you for your faithful prayers for all our people and their needs especially for those of you who have sent in your prayer requests. Our volunteers read and answer every one of your letters. We know you pray for us and we pray for you. And thank you for your generous donations and financial support. Your donations, along with all of our supporters across Canada, have kept the devotions on TV for more than 20 years. Every donation, large and small, is precious to us and allows us to continue this ministry to you. The TV devotions gather over 40,000 people every week in homes, hospitals, seniors' residences, apartments, and Catholic schools as together we pray to God through Mary for the great spiritual and temporal needs of our people. Please help us if you can. Make your check payable to Perpetual Help TV Devotions or go online to our website www.redemptrists.ca or www.redemptrists.tv and make use of the PayPal link we have established there for your convenience. Official charitable income tax receipts are mailed out monthly. Write to us with your prayer requests. Each week, we Redemptors offer a special Mass of Thanksgiving to God in honor of our Mother of Perpetual Help for all of your intentions. If you would like a free prayer card like the one used on the TV devotions, 
write to us at the address on your screen. So now following along with your prayer card, a final blessing. May the Lord Jesus Christ, Son of Mary, of perpetual help, be with you to defend you, within you to sustain you, before you to lead you, behind you to protect you, and above you to bless you all the days of your life. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Devotions TV in this new age of mercy, produced by the Redemptorists of Canada on national TV every week since 1995. Now you can find this week's program streaming live every week on Redemptorist TV and many more special features. Please join us on Redemptorist TV. Tell your friends. Help us celebrate. Our program is made possible by you, the viewers, and our mother of perpetual help.